the church. What comes to your mind when you think of the word church? The cross, the cathedral, people gathered in the church, the pope, prayer. Some might think of one of the Protestant churches. Yes, these are the various aspects of the church. They all represent the church. The word ecclesia, the church, in the Greek Bible, meant people of Israel. The early Christian community described herself as ecclesia and recognized herself as the assembly of those called by God in Jesus Christ. In other words, the church is the community of believers and the group of people who have been called by God and answered His calling. We often mistakenly think that we took the initiative to know God or we made a choice to believe God, but that is not true. It is wrong. In truth, God has called us first so that we could be with Him. God calls us in numerous and unpredictable ways. It can be through our parents and friends, some events, or even a few words. Then, why did God call us? Also, why and how did the church, the gathering of people who answered God's calling, begin? God's great love for us is hidden in God's calling and His will to establish the church. God created men and women to participate in His work of creation and also to share communion and love with Him. God formed the man with his own hands, in his own image, and blew the breath of his life into his nostrils. We are the fruits of God's infinite love. However, the first man and woman tempted to be like God. They betrayed him by eating the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They have fallen away from God. Since then, we, their offsprings, have been suffering from the bonds of the original sin, such as anxiety of death and pain of body and soul. All loving God did not leave us alone in the bonds of sin. God intended to lead us back to His eternal life so that we can share communion and love with Him. Eventually, God, the Father, sent His beloved Son, Jesus Christ, true God and true man, to be born in our likeness. Jesus Christ gave up His life for the ransom of our life so that we can pass over from death to resurrection. All of this could happen in God. By the sacrifice of Jesus, the door to salvation has been opened. Hoping to reach His salvation to the ends of the earth, Jesus chose the twelve, including Peter, the first apostle, and established the church. After Jesus ascended into heaven, He sent the Holy Spirit, our paraclete and advocate. In so doing, the mystery of the church has been manifested on earth. In a nutshell, the church is both a visible and invisible sign of the kingdom of God. It is the mystical body of Christ, God the Father planned, Jesus Christ founded by the words and action, and manifested by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The church was not made by man, but was planned, established, and initiated by the Most Holy Trinity and it has been passed down to us through the Pope and the bishops who are the successors of St. Peter and the other apostles. Now we, the people of God, are nourished with the body and blood of Jesus Christ under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We attend the Mass, listen to the Word of God, praise Him, receive the body and blood of Jesus, and become one with Him within the church. We also encounter with God in our prayers and reflect on the Word of God in our daily lives. Furthermore, we work with the poor and lowly and live in communion with one another 
in order to make the world pleasing to God. Therefore, the church is the people of God in communion with Him, the body of Christ that continues His work of salvation, and the temple of the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit resides and leads us. In the Creed, we confess that the church is one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic. The church is one because she confesses one faith and celebrates common worship whenever and wherever. The church is holy, even though she still includes sinners, because Holy Spirit resides in and guides her. The church is Catholic because she is equally open to anyone at any time. Finally, the church is apostolic because she has been passed down to us from the apostles. We are the body and members of Christ. Now, the mission of the church should be our mission, to spread the good news of salvation on earth. Today, the love of Christ impels us, who are the member of the church.